think we are finished with this part. This is the after and this is the before. So now I'm going to actually go into Photoshop. So I'm going to right click, click edit in. I learned a lot of this editing technique through uh, multiple people, but mainly um, in school. So I took a digital photography course and um, we actually did the camera raw in Photoshop instead of Lightroom, but I really like Lightroom and how I can really organize it a lot better and keep everything in one place. So now I'm going to press Command J and that just uh, duplicates the layer. So I have one that's untouched and it's locked and then I have one that I can edit. So I'm going to open up my actions. You can click a uh, window and then actions, but um, I just have it nice and handy over here on my, um, I guess toolbar. I'm not exactly sure what this is called. And so um, I'm using Jessica Cobasi's um, frequency separation. Um, I will link the download link for you in the description below. And then all you have to do, because this is an action preset, you just press play. And then it creates this awesome frequency separation that I really like. Um, this particular subject doesn't really need it, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to show you um, because, I mean, I know she has beautiful skin, but there are some weird shadows such as like in here that we could definitely, um, you know, fix. So I'm choosing the skin and then I'm actually um, hiding the texture. The texture obviously has the texture and the crispness. The skin um, has more of kind of like that, uh, the fuzziness. So it has like a blurred effect. It's kind of like a Gaussian blur. And so we're actually going to just use the texture. So this is actually what the texture looks like. You may see um, without the other layers, the texture actually has like this very thin, um, not very thin, but very detailed parts of the subject and everything else. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. You can definitely use your keyboard and mouse for this. I particularly uh, like to use my Wacom Intuos tablet. I've had this for years, um, like five years maybe. Um, I bought it specifically for digital painting um, because I had to have it for a class and then I just kind of stopped using it for that and started using it for this this year. We have the texture invisible right now so it's hidden and I'm just going to go in with the healing brush tool. So that's how you use the Jessica Cobasi's um, frequency separation. Also Julia Trotty has, um, not has, but she uses something very similar to this. So um, we're using the healing brush tool. I like to have it at a hardness of 11%, so very, still kind of hard, but a little uh, soft around the edges, um, sampled, screen mode, and then we have the Diffusion 5 current layer, and then yeah, so I'm um, just to, what sampled means is um, you press option and you select a sample that actually is what you want. So I'm going to select right here, this is pretty, and then I'm just going to go over it. So you can also click here to kind of enable your uh, Wacom tablet to have more of um, a sensitivity to it. So if I were to turn that on, um, it would be more sensitive to how hard or light I'm pressing. But because I want it to be pretty consistent, um, I'm not going to use that because I don't like putting too much pressure on the tip of my um, pen. So let's just go in. Okay, so I'm finished with her skin. You may notice that I didn't do uh, too much like on her chin. I didn't really do too much there. 
and then I barely even touched this area because I really wanted her freckles to shine. I love freckles. I wish I had freckles. So um, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is with the texture on and you can see that it's, it's still very natural but I still like like this here is a little too airbrushed for me. So what I like to do is um, tone, put the opacity down just a little bit. But first I want to show you a before and after. So this is with the frequency separation and this is without. So you can definitely see around her mouth, on her forehead, that um, we cleaned up some of the harsh shadows and some pigmentation. Okay, awesome. So now we're going to go to the texture. Um, she actually has gorgeous skin, but if I were to, if I were to kind of get rid of some texture, let's say some of these little blackheads, we all have them. Um, so I'm going to just uh, make my brush a little bit smaller. Um, why I change the mode is because sometimes when you do screen, it doesn't really get rid of what I want it to get rid of. So um, that's pretty much why. And I actually like to go back and forth depending on what I'm doing. But like I said, she already has like gorgeous skin. All I'm doing is um, smoothing some things out. Like this hair, let's get rid of that. And see, this is when the, um, the screen thing doesn't work very well. So I'll go back to normal and then I can really get rid of that. So this is with the frequency separation with the texture and skin edited and this is without. So um, you see that the hair on her forehead is gone, um, the little chin, um, some under eye, I mean she doesn't really have much under eye, she's like 13 so, um, but this is still like way too airbrushed for my liking. So what I'm going to do is go down to the skin and then actually make it a little bit less. So you can see that it's just a very subtle difference. And that's kind of what we're wanting for our photography is to have that subtle difference. We don't want it to look like she's a totally different person or that she looks like perfect because in real life she doesn't. But in real life she looks way better than with like these dark spots because we don't notice them in person. But first what I want to do is um, create this as a layer. So I'm just um, pressing down option and dragging it up. So now I've created a layer. And I think that's the same if you had alt, like the alt option key. I think that would be the same if you were on a Windows computer. So we're hiding that and we're actually going to put these two together. So I've selected both of them by pressing one of them, pressing shift and then I'm right clicking and merging my layers. Next, we're going to do some dodge and burn. This is a technique that Irene Rudnick um, is very familiar with. This is where I kind of got um, this idea and I really liked it. So I used to really be into makeup, so kind of having this um, virtual makeup kit is really awesome. So I've already made the um, highlights and the shadows adjustment layers um, but I'm going to show you how to do it on here and then we are going to go to curves awesome okay so now we're going to make it brighter so we're actually doing our highlight curve and then um, make sure that this is pressed and we're going to invert it so command I, invert, so now it turns into a black layer mask. We're going to come back down here, do curves once again, and do a little bit dark, 
not too dark you don't want it like that you want it still very natural invert again and now we have our shadow so I'm actually going to uh, name both of these oops I misspelled it because I have horrible spelling okay so now we have our shadows and our highlights and that's pretty much it I'm going to hide the shadows and then I'm going to highlight um, her face. So um, make sure that you're not pressing that, but you're pressing this one. This is your layer mask. And then I'm actually going to make um, the hardness zero and see if I like that. Yes. So do the hardness at zero. And we're only highlighting um, what's already on her face that's highlighted. So we're not going to go overboard with this. And then if you see that it's a little bit, um, I don't know, kind of crazy, then feel free to kind of tone down some things. Um, major highlight points are forehead, bridge of the nose, your cheekbone, and I like to highlight the cupid's bow, which is right here. And then, like maybe some of her eye area. Yeah, okay, awesome. I like that. And then the shadows. Um, well, let's go back to highlights. That's too much for me. So um, this is at 100. And this is without shadows. This is with shadows. Without, with. And you can tell that's a little much. So what I'm going to do is just crank it down just a little bit. Like I said, we're our focus is um, subtlety. Okay, so now we're going to do the shadows. Press your layer mask, make sure that's selected. And we're doing the same exact thing. So what I like to do with this is uh, do a little bit of contouring. Click over here if you're on your Wacom tablet and it will actually adjust to the pressure of um, how hard or soft you're pressing your Wacom tablet pin. So this is without it. So I'm just going to make a mark. I mean, that's pretty dark. This is with it so I'm, I can do as light or as dark as I want. This is with a shadow, this is without, you can tell a big difference. And then what we're going to do is actually tone it down, like I said before, because we don't want this to look completely fake. That is pretty much it. Just kind of call this the birth child of uh, Jessica Kobesi and Irene Rudnick, because it pretty much is. Uh, Jessica really likes her frequency separation and Irene does a lot of the dodge and burn, which I really like, but um, I like to combine it with the frequency separation as well. So um, this is the final photo. I'm going to go ahead and save it. The one on the left is our finished product and the one on the right is actually our complete before. So you can really see a big difference in what we have created. Um, Please let me know if you have any questions, if you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed creating this, and if you are looking um, for anything else of this sort, or if you are looking for any step-by-steps or anything in specific, please let me know in the comments below. You can find me on Instagram at sincerelysarahb. I also have a 
Instagram account for my calligraphy and my branding, which is Sarah B Calligraphy. So I will link everything um, below. I have more videos in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, I believe. And I really enjoyed creating this Lightroom tutorial for you. And I can't wait to do more. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure to like it if you liked it. And uh, comment if this has helped you in any way, shape, or form. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.